streaming music hasn't been the greatest for music in general. While I enjoy its convenience and large library of songs and albums, streaming music has largely been a bad deal for musicians. Algorithms and automated bots dominate their playlists, and artists get paid fractions of a penny per listen. But streaming music did do something good. It ended a war, a war that was arguably destroying music itself. This was the loudness war. The origins of the loudness war can be traced back to the beginning of recorded music itself, but it didn't really start to become a problem until the advent of the compact disc. Before CDs, the volume of recorded music was limited by the medium itself. If you made a song too loud on a vinyl record, the needle jumped right out of the groove, rendering the song unplayable. But that wasn't the case with CDs. Since the data was encoded digitally and read by a laser, the volume of the music could be pushed louder than ever before. And slowly, over the decades, that's exactly what happened. In the 90s, digital effects processing allowed ever more sophisticated volume manipulation, and the records of the time became increasingly louder. The music industry glommed onto loudness as a marketing technique, thinking that the louder a record was, the more it would stand out, and consequently, the more likely it was to be a commercial success. This led to an auditory arms race, where engineers were under pressure to make each record louder than the rest. This became known as the loudness war and it was being waged at the expense of sound quality. When you make a song louder, you can't just keep raising the decibels. Eventually you hit a peak, the maximum level. But what you can do is make it so your song peaks more often. This has the effect of increasing the overall loudness of a recording. It is somewhat analogous to inflating a tire. A deflated tire is flat. Fill it up just a bit and it has some give. There are peaks and valleys. It's lumpy. Fill it all the way up and it is smooth and uniform. Raising the volume on a recording has a similar effect on a song. Pumping up the volume lessens the dynamic range of the song, inflating the quiet parts, making it more uniformly loud. So what's wrong with that? After all, we don't like flat tires, right? Well, the problem is songs usually have loud and quiet parts. They have dynamic range. And dynamic range is often a crucial part of the listening experience. But when you blow up a song so that it's always peaking, you lose all of that. As audio engineer Matt Mayfield said, when there is no quiet, there can be no loud. The loudness war raged on into the 2000s, claiming victims as diverse as the Red Hot Chili Peppers, Metallica, The Cure, and Taylor Swift. Some of these recordings had their loudness levels pushed so hard there was audible and inadvertent distortion. Like an overinflated tire, these songs were on the verge of a blowout. Backlash formed against the loudness war. Recording professionals in the industry began campaigning for more dynamic range. There was no evidence that loudness led to increased sales. In fact, it seemed that given the choice, people would sooner listen to music with more dynamic range than not. But it was another digital revolution that finally brought an end to the loudness war. By the late 2010s, more and more people were listening to their music through streaming music sites like Spotify, YouTube, and Apple Music. And these sites normalized their audio levels. This meant that every song played was the same loudness, regardless of how many digital effects had been applied to it. The loudness war was finally over. But it didn't mean music was finally safe from digital distortion. The algorithms that underlie streaming music have become another threat to musical integrity. But I'll talk about that some other time. Special thanks to our Patreon patrons. Without you, the good stuff just wouldn't happen. So if you like what we do here, go on over to patreon.com slash the good stuff and become a supporter. Otherwise, you can like and subscribe to this channel. Hit the notification bell so you know when the next video is coming out. And I'll be back in a couple weeks with a new video. Thanks for watching.